Hello everybody, sorry that I'm a few minutes late, but it was YouTube not starting my thing. So, hi Marshall, hi Sherry, hi Ellen, hi JC, hi Elaine, hi Robbie. Um, so, what we are going to do today is, let me get everything settled. We are going to make uh, a scarab necklace. Now, I cannot uh, promise that we're going to finish everything <laughs> in this one. Hi, Gaylene. Um, because there's been a week since my last surgery, so I've been trying to catch up on stuff. Because, as you know, I wasn't able to bend or pick up stuff. So, I spent the morning watering the garden, washing car, doing laundry <laughs> and other things. Hi, Judy. Hi, Ermi. So, um, I made five beads, and if you have not watched, let me get back to um, my list of videos, so I can post the link directly to the video in which I showed you how to make uh, scarab beads. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. It's been a while, huh? <laughs> oh, duh. I almost passed it. Okay, so this was the tutorial in which I showed you how to make scarab beads using various... Um, media to create all this beautiful oil slick effect. Hi Francoise, hi Debra, hi Fran, hi Carol. So, um, I made five beads. The only difference, and I made these with the Perlex mica powders. Uh, the only difference between them is pretty much the size because I wanted to go for a tiered uh, necklace. So, they would go pretty much like this. And I wanted to, I'm going to use this one. I already placed the backing on these ones. It's not completely finished, but I want to use this one so I can show you the various ways in which you can attach uh, a bale or whatever you want to use in order to attach the beads to the necklace and then I'll finish these and while these are baking I'll show you how to make the in-between beads so our thing will look very very nice hi Francis yes you did okay so essentially what you want to work with is not the regular gold this is primo it's not the regular gold but the 18 karat gold if you do not have 18 car karat gold, you make it very easily with uh, by mixing half and half gold and white pearl. And you want first to... You don't want to go with all this uh, piece. This is on the thickest setting. And actually, it's not the thickest setting on the makings, but it would be the thickest setting on uh, other uh, machines. And I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. So, as you can see, I'm not sure if you can see very well the end here, but uh, makings has a one, which is the thickest, thickest, thickest. And then there's quite a bit of distance between the one and the two. The two is actually the equivalent of the sticker setting on other machines. Because if I... I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. I'm going to take a piece. So this will be on the makings. And then the next one, I'm going to put it on the atlas. Here 
which of course was set for a much thinner. <laughs> So the atlas starts with a zero, but the zero on the atlas and whatever is the thickest on other machines is the equivalent of the two on the makings. So let's see, and I'm going to, so this is the makings, this is the atlas. I'm going to change the focus a little bit so you can see better so this is the makings this is the atlas right is makings left is this is makings this is atlas because if I go on the makings on the thickest, so I'm going to return the makings to the setting one. See the difference how the, the one on the makings is thicker than the zero on the atlas or on other machines okay so that would be the main uh, thing that you need to keep in mind so I am going with the thickest regular thickest setting on regular machines on the makings it would be a two not a and I messed up here which of them was it here this one would be good uh, on any other machine but makings uh, go for the thickest setting hi Anna hi Chris and then of course I want to get some uh, bacon bond and I'm still at the bottom of this bottle and nicely smear it and you can do the beads the way that i did them like this you can do them with a bezel if you want to but i think that the scarabs by themselves without a bezel look better and then you want to have the part that doesn't have any mica shift and this one does so let me get it a couple more times so yeah what i was uh, in the meantime let me tell you what i was doing and why i am so late um initially what i wanted to post for the thirteen thousand subscribers uh giveaway i found on amazon some molds that looked very nice and nifty with all, not all, but with the major sigils of the houses in Game of Thrones. Just like, yay, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Because remember, I had a um, poll if you want more Game of Thrones stuff. And yes, you, I will make the dragon eggs and the nice chest for them. But as I said, I'm still catching up. Uh, so I thought, oh, this would be so neat, I'm going to get them and then we are going to make some uh, Game of Thrones pendants with the sigils, with the... Well, ain't working. I mean, those uh, molds are very deep and they have too many intricacies that you cannot actually get a good except for the dire wolf of the storks you cannot really get a good imprint then i was like okay so polymer clay ain't working i looked in the reviews and a lot of people were complaining that even with chocolate it didn't work hi nunya so i said well let me try because i had the complete set of the new liquid sculpey the one with all kinds of colors let me try the liquid sculpey and that didn't work either now because the moment i started taking them out of the molds this is what happened
they broke. Except for the house Tully and house High Garden, they broke. Hi, Sonia. So I even I I still have a couple to take out, among which because the set comes with uh, a separate regular dragon. Yeah, and they have the writing on them on, uh, with the each house's logo that is very poorly done also. But anyway, um, there's one of them that has the one dragon that's got only one head, so it doesn't really correspond to any of the sigils of the houses in Game of Thrones. And on that one, I used the uh, Kato polyclay because I thought, well, maybe... Sculpy liquid is not good enough. I still have to take that one out and see. And my next thing will be because uh, it's obvious that you need something that will be liquid enough to go in all the nooks and crannies, but that at the same time would be um, sturdy enough so that when you take it out, because see what happens. Let me grab one. See what happens. You have all these itty bitty things. Yeah, I need to clean them, of course. Uh, so when you try to take it out, they are so thin that they, they break. And when you try to push the polymer clay in, it doesn't go all the way in. So my next thing will be, because regular resin is a little bit too thick to do that. Um, so what I'm, I thought I'm going to try, uh, will be the amazing, uh, five minutes resin. And with that one, you need to work so fast because it gets hard almost instantaneously. But, uh, consider it because you have to think also how you're going to color them. Um, I just said that, Cherry. Um, the amazing uh, five minutes resin uh, cures white, opaque white. But I know for a fact that, for example, the Franco Garcia artisan powders, these ones, and certain liquid gessos and acrylic work on that resin. And how do I know that? Because... Uh, it's commonly used by Prima Marketing for all kinds of embellishments, especially on the big uh, embellishments uh, molds. The ones like... The ones like this. So I'm thinking if the amazing 5 minutes resin works on stuff like this, it might work on those. So that would be the my next test on those uh, Game of Thrones things. So, in the meantime, you saw what I did. I just got a little... This is actually a cane bender, and as I said, I love w using them as rollers because they work so good as smallish rollers. And as usual, and I said this before, if you roll your roller over raw clay over baked clay, it will separate by itself. You won't have to bother trimming it. And for example, I did it like this. I can actually enhance the angle of the bevel and push the clay a little bit farther out. And then when I get here, all I have to do is to roll it over the baked and you see how it came out by itself yeah i love game of thrones and the only it, the last uh, season was a huge disappointment for pretty much everybody so uh, let's talk about bail now you can do a simple bail uh, just by inserting a jump ring between 
the backing that you just put there but then your problem will be that you'll have you'll need another ring to connect it to whatever because your jump ring will be in this direction and you would need something like this another solution Now the solution is to make your own uh, looped wraps and for that you need to keep in, in mind that whenever you put wire in you'll have to have some kind of loop at the end because otherwise the wire will come out unless you use glue. So. Hold on, I need reading glasses now. Oops, sorry. So. This is a little thick, but this is the only gold I have. I don't work much with gold colored stuff. So, first of all, you want to make your wrapped loop already. And in order to do that, you go a little bit like this, then pretty much whenever you get for them to get together, you want to get it to this position. Then you get over, and at this point, you start wrapping. It's not perfectly done, but I'm just trying to show you how to do it. Normally, I would spend a little bit more time with this. So, you get your wrapped loop. You always want to make sure that the end here of the wire is not sticking out, so make sure it's nicely tucked in. And you can feel like this, and if you feel that it's still a little bit uh, coming out, you can either use one of these very fine cutters, and if nothing comes out, then you can use a, a small metal file to file it out. And then your next thing is because you'll have to put this like this so that you can attach it. You can put a chain through it or whatever, a cord or whatever you want to do. And your next thing is to make that loop that will stay inside the bead. So considering that you'll have the bail like this, you need to make the loop perpendicular on the bale itself and you can actually position it a little bit like this just make sure that it is perfectly perpendicular and then all you have to do is simply to separate here Insert your loop and then get it back here. And you can use your roller a little bit to make sure you didn't trap any kind of air. And you have a bale for your bead. Another thing that you can do. and that's what I am going to do for them is to use a small uh, screw eye pin 
after they are baked. So you simply make a little hole with your using your hand drill and then you glue the little screw in. Okay. Hi Doris. Oh wow, nice. I love powwows. We have quite a few here in Oklahoma. I used to go to all of them that were in my neighborhood. There's always, uh, there's a big municipal park that's not far from me. And there's always a big powwow there. I didn't even look when it is this year or if maybe it already has been. But um, and what you can do to <coughs> make these look a little bit more relic-like is <coughs> to use, <coughs> use the smallest of the texturing sponges just to give it a little bit of dimension here. You don't want a lot, just a little bit. And then once they are done, you can buff them to come up with a little bit of shininess. Or you can ahead of time use some uh, perfect pearls. And I'll grab some in a minute here to show you. And you can actually use your roller for a better texture impression. I'm not pressing too hard because I don't want to deform my clay. I just want to leave a faint uh, texture here. And why I said perfect pearls? Because perfect pearls bonds with the clay when you're baking the clay. So you won't have to worry about the mica powder coming off, rubbing off. And Perfect Pearls has a very bright gold that's called Sunflower Sparkle. <laughs> that works beautifully for all kinds of Egyptian inspired, ancient Egyptian inspired stuff. Uh, Perfect Pearl is not as fine as Perlex, but as I said, it does bond with the clay. I know, I know, I had a little, there we go. A little cosmetics brush. You can get these brushes at the any dollar store. And they come in in a kit that's very, very cheap. The only thing you will need from that kit is the eyelash mascara applicator but the paint brushes are super fine obviously because they are for cosmetic application
Yes, I know I made a mess. That's fine. It can be cleaned. Okay. The surgery went okay, but they definitely put in the wrong lens. So I'll have to go back for another one. And I had a lot of grief last week because of them. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm going to put these in the oven. Okay, let's clean this. And let me put these back where they belong so they are not in the way. For the in-between beads, they are actually there are actually two hieroglyphic stamps I found on Amazon. I know it's I cannot see with it. So now with the left eye, I cannot see far and I cannot see close. Before, at least I was able to see close. Now I cannot see close either. And uh, hi, Bennett. And not only that, but it gives me headaches. So I'm not a happy camper. And then when I went uh, Friday for the post-op, I had with me the package that I had received pre-op, you know, with all the appointments. But I get there and the very nasty guy at the reception is like, your appointment was yesterday. I'm like, no, my appointment was today. And I show him the package and he looks at me very, with a lot of disdain and prints a page that showed that my appointment was on the 25th and I said you can show me that as much as you want I showed you my package and again he looks at me you know with a very disgusted face and like I cannot help you the doctor is not in today okay so I had to take a uber home because I didn't feel I was able to just wait there for over an hour and a half for the medical transportation to pick me up I got home and of course I called to make an appointment and the lady at the scheduling she's like I see you have an appointment on Monday at 1030 did you want another one they're like I don't know about any appointment Monday at 1030 and I explained to her I had an appointment today and then when I got there I was told that my appointment was yesterday and she's like, I cannot see anything on your file except the appointment tomorrow. So definitely somebody is trying to cover their tracks. And it's a good thing that the nasty guy at the reception printed that thing for me because now I have proof. 
you know but uh, yeah I'm I'm telling you tomorrow I'm going to raise hell because this is unacceptable and it messed up my whole day Friday now it's going to mess up my whole day Monday so I'm I'm trying so hard to catch up and it's really really irritating now uh, why I suggest to use this one even if it is more expensive than the smaller one um, I'll show you here uh, in a minute why because see how there are these spaces in between the hieroglyphs and we are going to use this specific feature of the um, stamp for to create our beads so let me get this through the machine again because I had them conditioned but you know you always have to recondition them So you want to go with your clay through the machine until you get on one side the sheen. Okay. Oh yeah, because tomorrow I have to get an Uber again. Because with the medical transportation I need three business days in advance to schedule anything. So yeah, I'm going to really, really file a complaint about all this because this is not right okay so again on the thicker setting on a normal machine bonsoir dominique so on a makings it would be on the set settings two what you want to do is we will use a double so you want to make sure that you have pretty much a the same amount of clay and you can do this before or after you use it and you know because i have issues with my hands i always put the clay on the texture not the texture on the clay so that's what i'm going to do now again and always use i always use armor all i personally find that water changes a little bit the texture on the clay so i always use armor all and you always place it on the clay not on the stamp because when you put it on the stamp uh, in some area it's going to pull in the no nooks and crannies but not uh, stay properly on the raised area so you always put your release agent on the clay so just a little droplet and then you can go ahead and uh, smear it around and then I'm going to place it on my clay. And then grab some wax paper. I know a lot of artists show you all those fancy ready cut deli papers. Sorry, but I don't see why pay to pay almost 10 times the price. I just get the cheapest wax paper sometimes yeah i do take the time and i cut it into pieces but most of the time i just get it like this i mean and then i'm going to start at the top most of the time i have to stand up and then just keep going towards the bottom of it i'm trying to do it in one motion it doesn't always work okay because as i said hand issues and most of the time it works pretty good okay it did work 
pretty good. So, and yes, you can find this in my Amazon influencer store. <coughs> The next, for the next thing, we will need some cling wrap. And at this point, I'm going to put the one that has the sheen facing down. And then I'm going to gently because I want my beads to be fairly thick. I don't want them to start curling in the oven because they are too thin. So my next thing is, let me get, cause I'm gonna make them about two inches. I think that should be good. Let me grab this, I don't need. It's too much, this is too much. So I'm cutting close to what I'm going to need in the end. Then place the clean wrap. Your main concern here is uh, about wrinkles. You do not want any wrinkles because any wrinkles that you put there are going to translate into wrinkles on the clay and you don't want, want that. Okay, I messed up. <clears throat> Let me get my reading glasses. Alrighty. So. Uh, and I was asked, how do you manage to, to do it? Usually what I do, I go on one end. See, I kind of get it stuck on the tile at the bottom. Like this, because that will cause some traction here. And you can even place it under the, the tile if you want. And then gently go, see, I'm pulling with the bottom of my palms like this and then I'm pulling on the tops to try and create as little wrinkle as possible and it's it's no wrinkle so I'm good to go next you want a good strong rigid blade I talked about this with my sponsors I can tell you uh, Tiny Pandora Teresa Pandora Salgado uh, sent me a few things of the newest things that uh, she got in the store and uh, among which she sent me this blade which I can tell you is the the same way as you know I'm praising the Gilly blade the super thin blade that comes in 8 inches and in 4 inches I'm praising it for shaving and for cane slicing the same way you're gonna hear me praise this blade number one it's super super sharp <laughs> very careful when you handle it um i'm actually thinking of uh, putting on it the handles from the um, uh, scalpy super slicer the other thing is that it's fairly thick and it is the most rigid blade i've ever worked with it's absolutely fantabulous so I am going to go with it at the edge. See how I have these distances. I'm going to select for my beads to be in between these edges. And of course you can select whichever of these hieroglyphs looks the better for you. So I'm going to go here. Because cutting through, I'm not going to cut all the way through. Because it's kind of hard to do that through two layers of clay. But uh, cutting through the cling wrap is going to give me nice rounded 
edges of my rectangular beads. Then I'm going to do this one. And I need four beads or six if I decide to put one past my last scarab beads. So I have two now. You might have to go twice through the pasta machine if you want more beads. Three. And four. And now I can remove my cling wrap and finish the cut. So I did this. Now my next one, and I'm going to get a new uh, cling wrap because uh, you don't want to reuse it. Because remember, any little nick will translate into a wrinkle on your polymer clay. And now I have to do this in order to cut the sizes. Again, I need nice rounded edges. So again, I'm going to place this first of all, get it here at the bottom and then hold at the bottom with the bottom of your palm. And there we go. So now I'm going to go. And again, I'm not going to go all the way. And I didn't cut right. Do. And remove the cling wrap. Finish my cuts. And then I'm going to use this other blade to and here are my beads. I'm going to still have to work just a bit on the very corners, not a lot. Now these you want to, um, so the only thing that I need to do is just because they have the tendency to squish a little bit. And if you want your beads to be perfect, you don't remove this. You're going to lose these, but you don't remove this. You just bake them in a block like this, and then when they are done, you just snap them. It's going to make you waste some clay, though. And now we have the four beads that are going to go. And of course, you can make them shorter if you want. You don't have to make them this uh, long yes the polyclay play and uh, you can find them on Amazon too but you have to wait like six weeks to get them because that's how I found them on Amazon um, 
Okay, so no, Tiny Pandora sells the, let me give you both links. Tiny Pandora sells the thick blade. Give me just a minute. And I'll give you all the links. And she sells them also in a smaller uh, version separately. And these are four inches. So these uh, you get three, four, five dollars. But I think that the large one only comes with the blend kit. Hold on, let me make sure. Yeah, the large one comes only with the kit. It's, but the kit is awesome, and I'm going to to make a tutorial soon using it. This is the kit, and then the the thin blade, the Geely blade, is on Polyclay Play. And if you just search blade there, the best deal is, um, no, come on. The best uh, deal, you can find them separately. You can find them with the four inches in a storage case and the eight inches in a storage case, but your best deal would be the kit because you get the 8 inches plus the 4 inches. So let me get you that one too. So this is the one, the thin one. Okay, now what you want to do on the, on these ones, you absolutely want to bake them in between tiles so they don't move at all when they are once uh, when they are baking so you get a tile you cover it with wax paper or even printing paper it's up to you and you place your beads and then after you place them and of course you can um, use some perfect pearls on it so let's use some perfect pearls first because before placing them for baking hi robin and hi anybody i missed because i have to look at what i'm making here so let's make them look really goldish and i should have put on my mask but we want to make these look really really goldish Now, uh, one thing that I have to tell you, I've seen several tutorials um, that were showing how to use, mostly it was this specific stamp, uh, to make all kinds of ancient Egypt inspired and all that. And um, you're making these in gold and antiquing them. And I wanted to tell you, if you do something 
Egypt inspired? And you make it look like gold? Do not antique it! Gold does not oxidize. That's why it's so expensive. You never antique something that is supposed to look like gold. Ever, ever, ever. I mean, for goodness sakes, not even six carat gold will not antique, will not oxidize. So you never antique something that's supposed to be imitating gold. Okay, let me clean this. Yeah, they are supposed to look a little bit like gold bars, because remember those ancient pharaohs, they always had the gold thing. So when you place them here, make sure that they are perfectly straight. They don't go in any way left or right. And then you place another piece of wax paper on top and then another uh, tile upside down on it. Oh yeah, I was saying about the, the only one that can get the polymer clay is the dire wolf. But see how the winter is coming, how stupid it looks here. So yeah, anyway, we'll do that. I will do those here with amazing resin. But yeah, this is the how to finish them. Now, in order to attach the bales, I'm going to show you because I'm going to do this after they are baked and when they are uh, cooled off so that, as I said, we might not put the, the thing. Yeah, it was pretty much like this. Uh, we might not put it together. So we're going to put it together uh, completely next Sunday but one thing that I wanted to uh, show you because I might make a few of them I had a while ago I made a tutorial on how to make turquoise nugget beads Because turquoise was uh, turquoise and lapis and uh, coral were among the most used in ancient Egypt. So just as a remembrance, if you see me using them next uh, Sunday, this is how to make them. And. Give me just a second to find them. Uh. I am going to use these. And you can, yes, you can find them in my Amazon Influencer Store if you have none. And they are these little... Uh, they come in a set that are with uh, one, two, three, four, five, six colors. So you get the gold, the copper, the ancient gold, bright silver, gunmetal, and uh, antique silver. So this is what I'm going to use. And the way that I'm going to do it is to poke a hole with the hand drill then put a little bit of loctile, loctite and insert these so uh, yeah pretty much from much this is how it's going to to get done and we shall put them together next Saturday I'm not yet sure what I'm going to use for a uh, if I'm going to use a string, if I'm going to use a chain, if I'm going to use whatever I'm going to use, but we'll figure out, <laughs> I'll figure out by then. But uh, yeah, this is my back starts hurting. <laughs> oh yeah, faience is beautiful. Yeah, I need, I have on my list making uh, four faience and it's not hard at all. It's very easy to, 
to make but uh, let me get this closer so you can take a better look uh, let me refocus so you can see that you can make it look exactly like gold They look like little gold ingots. Oops. Okay. I'm gonna have to reposition them. And uh, the best bet on what I'm going to put on them as finish, uh, I think that I'm going to use Renaissance wax. Of course, you can use uh, mean wax or a homemade shellac or whatever else you want but you need this time you need stuff to be glossy you do not want stuff that is um, uh, satiny you want stuff super glossy so I as I said I'm not sure yet it looks like one of them is a little bit wrong cut I'll have to look at them close in close up maybe have to recut it but uh, yeah we'll do we'll put the whole thing together next Sunday and um, as I said I hope you'll you'll have fun making your own and of course you can make a, a shorter version of this and add a little you can put two scarabs small scarabs uh, back to back and make it hang from a small chain and you can make matching earrings for this so uh thank you for being here and i will see you next sunday hopefully for sure <laughs> and i'm going to lay down now a little bit because my back is killing me we are supposed to have rain tonight finally so i guess that's why it's a little bit that and washing the car <laughs> Oh, by the way, let me give you a, let me give you a tip, okay? I bought on uh, Amazon. There was a knockoff of uh, Mr. Clean's Magic Eraser, and initially I was super miffed when I got them because they didn't do that good of a job as Mr. Clean. So I I was ranting and raving for a whole day. Uh, because i'm sorry but with my hands and with my problems with scrubbing i always do the mr clean magic eraser to clean the bathroom and the sinks and stuff it's so much easier for me so um my car because i have so much vegetation there's a lot of sap and if you've ever uh, parked your car under a tree you know that you get those minuscule droplets of sap that if you leave there in time they oxidize and your car looks like crap and um, I was getting ready because usually I use 409 and then I really really rinse it off but I you know my eyes fell on the big bag box of those magic eraser knockoffs like hmm I wonder I can tell you I did not have to rub I did not have to scrub just mild pressure and my car looks beautiful right now <laughs> so a tip if you have bad hands and you want your car to look gorgeous get them I'll actually let me give you the link to them uh, they are not in my Amazon influencer store because <laughs> they are not related to polymer clay but uh, just to give you the tip very careful because they fall apart worse than the uh, magic eraser but if you hold it really good in your hand it's going to to do good L let me i hope that youtube is going to let me post this yes it did so yeah these are it and including the the wheel rims and even the the windshield and the windows i mean it was amazing on the tile and on things and stuff it doesn't work as good as mr clean but uh on this and it's a really inexpensive because i use just one sponge for the whole car 
and you can see they come down to like 50 cents a, a sponge so <laughs> yeah okay i'll see you all next sunday and i'm going to put these in i think that the scarabs are baked i'm gonna put these in the oven so have a wonderful weekend and yeah look forward i'm uh, almost done with the um, it's a uh, resin for gemstone i'm sure that you will love it and with it will come the uh, 13,000 subscribers giveaway only that as a forward thing um the never need won't be shipped until after the 12th of august because trish is taking a short vacation so that's why i didn't hurry that much with the uh, giveaway thing because it's not you know i mean cannot be shipped anyway right now so yeah look forward i might finish it tonight it depends how i feel after i'm resting after the the um, live thank you so much for being here and i'll see you all next sunday if i don't come up online on a whim to show you something else <laughs> okay have a wonderful sunday